15 months ago, the Carolina Panthers were still looking for their first regular season NFL victory. They've come a long way in a short time, and this afternoon at Erickson Stadium will play host to their first ever playoff game. A second year franchise is supposed to act like an obedient child. Seen, but not heard. In 1996, the roar of the Panthers was heard around the NFL. We're going to Green Bay! We're going to the Frozen Tundra next Sunday! By winning their division and reaching the NFC Championship game, Carolina faced overwhelming odds and authored one of the most improbable seasons the NFL has ever seen. weekend the Green Bay Packer fans shouted we want Dallas we want Dallas well they don't have Dallas coming to Lambeau Field this afternoon for the NFC Championship game it's the Carolina Panthers it's good this is what it's all about baby kids grow up me had a grasshopper dreaming about playing a game like today freezing frozen tundra of Lambeau Field where else would you want to be I'm glad I'm here in the NFC Championship game, the Panthers were happy to be there, but they played as if they belonged there. The Panthers jumped to a 10-0 lead on the eventual Super Bowl champion and fought and clawed till the final gun. Jones looking to throw, wide open, Howard Griffin catches the ball in the right corner, touchdown! Their triumphant 1996 season ended in the NFL's most storied stadium. But the season began in an uptown Charlotte stadium that will one day house its own historic memories. Beautiful, beautiful stadium. They gonna rock in here. It's a rockin' joint right here. It's beautiful, it's state of the art. It's the envy of the NFL. <laughs> Your program right here. Beautiful new Erickson Stadium right was a foreboding here. jungle for opposing teams and a source of pride for the Panther players. This is the place, Charlotte, is the place to be. And I'm from L.A. <laughs> Got a new home, new home here in the Carolinas. <laughs> See if we can start off right. Get ready to turn it up and turn it all the way up. Let's go oh. and win. One, two, three, win. The visiting Falcons looked like deer in headlights in the face of a locked and loaded Carolina defense. Linebacker Lamar Lathan, number 57, led the way with three sacks. While fellow outside linebacker Kevin Green added two takedowns. Carolina kept their heads while Atlanta was losing theirs, and the Panthers' ball control offense supplied them with the season's first win. Oh, there wasn't anybody near him. What happened out there today was no accident. It's a heck of a job. We took a big step in establishing the Panthers' identity today. Offense, defense, kicking game. It was a great team win. 
We'll see you tomorrow. That's right, man. This is Stranger Lie, and I think as soon as uh, you know players get to start hearing about the Carolina Panthers and you know Jerry Richardson and you know Mike McCormick and Bill Poley and Dom Capers and the stuff that's happening down here, they're all going to try to flock here. Coming off a win at New Orleans in the season's second week, the Panthers were ready to prove that Carolina was the place to be. Let's go, baby! Knock them off the board! From the 19, first down, Burline back to throw. Fires over the middle, Walls, juggling catch, takes it in the end zone, touchdown! How do you like that? Beat the 49er. Whoa, yeah. With Kerry Collins injured, Steve Berline masterfully dissected the Niner defense for 290 yards and two touchdowns. A lot of time, floats it over the middle, touchdown! Wesley Rawls, his second of the ball game. I'm astounded by what's going on here so far this afternoon. You and the rest of the NFL. <laughs> we all look good today now. Yeah, we got to finish it out now. But with the game seemingly slipping away, the 49ers showed signs of life. Touchdown, 49ers! Somebody lost Laval! They sure did. we stay focused, man. We got 15 minutes to make it happen. 15 minutes, Steve. 15 minutes, Ray. Make it happen. In the midst of a furious San Francisco rally, the Panthers faced the season's first defining moment. the greatest victory in the franchise's young history. A foundation to build on through the year. We gained some respect around the league today. We're 3-0, three division wins, sitting on top of the division. Remember what it's taken, all right, to get right here. Because we've got 13 more games to go. The most important thing is, guys, it's a lot tougher to handle success than it is adversity. Yeah! Hey, Tyler! Hey, Tyler, what's up, man? What up, homie? What up? What up, dog? Yes, sir. Over the next six weeks, Carolina would win only twice, leading to a 5-4 and four record in early November. Like stockbrokers witnessing a waning bull market, many thought Carolina's decline was an inevitable correction. But in the midst of this fallow stretch, the seeds of a revival were sown. The offensive line began to gel with free agent guard Greg Skrepinak leading talented young blockers Blake Brockermeyer, Matt Campbell, Frank Garcia, Matt Elliott, and Norberto Garrido. Running back Anthony Johnson took over after Tamanga Biakapatuko was lost for the year, and Johnson emerged with three straight 100-yard games to kick off an 1,100-yard season. And wide receivers Mark Carrier, number 83, and rookie Moosin Mohammed gave balance to a developing big play offense. The Carolina Panthers were built for the long haul. With owner Jerry Richardson, President Mike McCormick, and GM Bill Polian supplying the organization, Coach Tom Capers supplied a system which meant any hard times would be short-lived. Carolina's renaissance began in the first nationally televised game at Erickson Stadium, and it gave the Panthers a 5-0 home record for the season. Comes back at the 30, Rockets still going to the 20, 10, 5, Rockets scores! Touchdown! Double wides left, here's college play action, he's looking right, throw to Griffith, open at the 15, to the 10, to the 5, he scores! Howard Griffith! 
The following week, tight end Wesley Wall showed the toughness that made him the team's leader in touchdowns and the Pro Bowl starter. How do you do? <laughs> Touchdown, Panthers! And Anthony Johnson earned NFC Player of the Week with 123 yards on 27 carries. The offense continued its dome improvement by scoring 31 in Houston. Downfield for Walls, open at the 20, at the 10, <laughs> touchdown Panthers. The defense also had its day with four sacks, four turnovers, and a playful romp to the end zone by 37-year-old Sam Mills. Five, touchdown! Sam Mills scores! Defense again took center stage against Tampa Bay as Carolina administered the season's only shutout. And, and with their fourth straight victory, the Panthers' 9-4 record made them contenders for the NFC West title. What's up? A big reason for the Panthers' second-half surge was the defense, led by the NFL's top two sackers, Kevin Green and Lamar Lathan. Yeah, I like that one, too. Sam Mills joined them as a Pro Bowl starter, and he recorded the best season of his 11-year NFL career. Mike Fox, Greg Cragen, and Gerald Williams anchored a defensive line that was often underrated but never overmatched. I like that one, too. In the secondary, safeties Pat Terrell, Brett Maxey, and Chad Cota supplied the big hits. While cornerbacks Toy Cook, Tyrone Poole, and pro bowler Eric Davis provided blanket protection on pass receivers. Carolina's defense was first in sacks and second in points allowed. And had a knack for turning every play into an adventure. It's time. Pumps. Fumbles the ball. Picked up by Kevin Green. It'll be a sprint to the goal. Green to the 40. Green to the 30. Kiss him bye bye. And Kevin Green at the five. While the defense was well known, another unit was a mystery. The characters in this whodunit drama were draft picks and free agents who became the secret agents on Carolina's unsung special teams. Starring the man whose 37 field goals set an NFL record, the NFL's all-time leader in punting yards, the NFC's third-ranked return man, and the speedster whose 30-yard average led the league. There you go. Their mission, if they chose to accept it, was to be the best unit in the NFL. Mission accomplished. Bates will take it at his eight to the 10. Bates 20, 25, 30. Bates has the room at the 40-yard line. Down the near sideline to the 40, to the 30. The sprinter takes it to the 20. 10, 5, Bates scores! Winslow Oliver backpedaling at his 18. Up to the 20, 25, 30. Oliver with a nice move to the 40. Down the near sideline, 50. He stumbles to the 40, to the 30. He could go. 15, 10, 5. Winslow Oliver's got a touchdown. Now and then we got challenges that step up. Every now and then. Six one in the house. You know where the king lives. They know where, where, where we live. All we gotta do is step up to the challenge and put them back in the court. Riding a four-game winning streak, the Panthers entered the kingdom where San Francisco had ruled the NFC West for nearly 20 years. This game would prove two things that Carolina couldn't be bullied, and that Carrie Collins and the Panther offense were ready to break up. <laughs> Collins enjoyed the best day of his NFL career and would be named NFC Player of the Week for his 327 yards passing and three touchdowns. Hit right, jet two drive, eight stop, wide corner. Make a play, 12, make a play! Looking pumps, 
can't find anybody. Now he throws. Touchdown to Wesley Walls in the middle of the end zone. Looking to throw again. Floats it in the left corner. Walls diving catch. He's got a touchdown. Collins looking for Willie Green again. There it goes. He's got it at the two. He rolls in the end zone. Touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> Willie Green big time. Unbelievable. It's getting awful quiet in here. It's getting awful quiet. I, don't, I can hear a pin drop. This game mirrored their early season encounter with Carolina jumping to an early lead and the Niners responding with their well-honed resiliency. He jets full, goes up the left sideline, runs past another defender, down into the end zone, touchdown 49 With San Francisco rallying, a second-year team might be expected to fold. But the Carolina Panthers expected to win, and they seized their moment. They stop him! They hit him behind the line of scrimmage! And the Panthers are in control! The Panthers had taken the King's crown, and with a 10 and 4 record, they were ready to take control of their playoff destiny. Hey, I'm so proud of all you guys, man. We came, we came in here and we did something no one thought we were going to do. Right, sir. Oh, we did with conviction, baby. Let's right, yeah. go. Yeah. Feels good, yeah. Yeah. Feels good. We got a group of guys here committed to doing something special. Today was a big step. Remember this. We've got unfinished business, guys. Yeah. What we did today is we took control of the division, but now we've got to finish it off. One week after the emotional win against San Francisco, Carolina relied on its poise and focus for a 27-16 win over Baltimore. It was the team's seventh win in seven tries at Erickson Stadium, and it gave them a remarkable 11-4 record for the year. The Panthers were now ready for the final game of the regular season, a game that would determine a division championship. NFL season, thousands of aches and thousands of hours, all melded into one afternoon. 60 minutes of football now stood between the Panthers and their place in history. to a quick nine to nothing lead. But Pittsburgh's rugged defense responded and enabled the Steelers to get back in the game. Trailing by four late in the fourth quarter, the Steelers launched a desperate final drive. perfect home record of the improbable dream of a division title now rested with the iron will of the Carolina defense. The tenth play of the drive for the Steelers, who trailed by four, and the game comes down to perhaps one play here. Double wides each side. Back to pass Stewart, looking to throw. Fires in the end zone. What is it? What is it? And 
Most people outside of this room didn't think you'd accomplish. We set out to training camp. We said our first goal was what? Win the division, right? I'm going to tell you what. I couldn't be prouder of you guys. The way we won that game out there today, all right, that shows you that was will, man. That was the Panthers' will. Is this family in here? Okay. Hey, this is family in here. Let's go. We did it together. Everybody's won together. to throw in the end zone. Green's got it! Touchdown! What a great catch! Aikman in the pocket. There he goes again, downfield, and the ball is intercepted! his own seven. Puts it up down the middle of the field. Intercepted by Sam Mills. He was going to take a knee and keeps going to the 10. Mills to the 5. Still going towards the end oh, He got to the 1. He got to the 1 yard line. <laughs> Sam Mills with the icing on the cake. Oh. That was a great one today. All I know is this. We're one step away, buddy. And I don't want to count these guys out, buddy. You guys never doubted yourself. Never. You I believed, know. all right? We were going to go out there and win that game, and you believed in each other, and you trusted in each other. I'm going to tell you something. You guys have gained respect. Hey, check this out, man. Check this out. Hey, we need to go back outside and thank our fans, because if it were not for baby, we wouldn't be right here. Carolina Panthers are not only the biggest story in the NFL this year, they'll probably be one of the top stories in sports in this decade. With their playoff win over the defending Super Bowl champions, the Carolina Panthers accomplished more than anyone thought possible. Theirs was a team of believers, men with the strength to endure and the courage to dream. New Edge Pro Gel presents the Carolina Panthers Ultimate Performance of 1996. The Carolina Panthers exceeded all expectations in 96, winning the NFC West and disposing of the defending Super Bowl champions in the divisional playoffs. Kerry Collins threw touchdown passes to Wesley Walls and Willie Green while a swarming defense kept the Cowboys on the ropes. Interceptions by Sam Mills and Pat Terrell ensured a 26-17 win and Carolina's trip to the NFC Championship.